Well, we're joined now by the former Shadow Home Secretary, Yvette Cooper. She is now looking at ways of tackling Europe's refugee crisis. Welcome to The Daily Politics. First of all, though, you reportedly asked Jeremy Corbyn last night, as we said, for reassurance that the Labour Party would continue to support Shoot to Kill. That means that the police can shoot terrorists when they pose an immediate threat to life. Has he given you that assurance? Well, my point is that we've got a long-standing legal framework which allows for the use of lethal force in situations where you know, you've got an imminent threat to life when you might have terrorists on the streets who are killing people. Uh, and that, I think that legal framework is important and needs to continue. Um, as I understand it, there has been some reports in the papers today that, uh, that Jeremy has confirmed that he also supports that. Now, I think, um, look, obviously... You know, I disagree with what he said yesterday. and Because he said, I'm not happy with the shoot-to-kill policy in general. I think it's quite dangerous and I think can often be counterproductive. Was he wrong? Yeah, I think the look, you've got very serious threats where, you know, if people are being killed, if you saw what, you know, think of what happened in the Bataclan, if you think about the kinds of terrorists that we're dealing with and the suicide bombers and so on, of course there are times when the, the police need to make their own operational decision and it has to be a decision for the police, not for politicians. They have to make the decision about those circumstances and when in those circumstances lethal force is justified. But I think everybody would expect that when you want to protect innocent lives and when you're dealing with this kind of threat. So my understanding is that everybody has confirmed that continues to be our position. Right. And it certainly needs to be. Right. You've got to be able to defend people's, so uh, just people's to be lives. Just to be clear, in your mind, Jeremy Corbyn, has he personally said to you, uh, Yvette Cooper, you wanted a reassurance about this, I do support the police's shoot to kill I, no, policy in those circumstances. No, and I haven't spoken to Jeremy today. Would you like, would you like, but would you I, like to hear that reassurance you when know, you say it's so, such a sensitive time um, that if there was any, uh, you know, people were misconstruing what he meant precisely, that, it, that he's clear sure, about... Sure, look, of course it's good to have the clarity, but just let's be... You know, honest, Joe. I think this is so important and so serious that I don't want this to just be about a kind of who said what to who person no, in the he conversations. Is the leader, he's the leader had. of Her Majesty's know, opposition. But as, you know, my understanding is this remains the Labour Party's right. policy, and I am absolutely clear that it has to remain Labour's policy, supporting the police and the security services in a very difficult job that they need to be able to do to keep us all safe. Of course, there are always safeguards with the use of lethal force. There have to be investigations whenever it's used, whenever that kind. Of thing happens but you know you also have to be able to keep people safe and it's important that we should continue to support that right because Hillary Benn said this morning the shoot to kill policy was perfectly reasonable That's so right. in your mind they are now at one even though 24 hours ago the shadow foreign secretary and the Labour leader seem to hold different viewpoints you think they're now holding look, one you know I'm not a member of the shadow cabinet so I obviously can't speak no nope. for Jeremy on this but you heard but those two yeah, views you've, and you heard my view very clearly I mean, about Jeremy Corbyn happened. also came under fire last night. This is at the meeting of Labour MPs because of his associations with the Stop the War Coalition. Um, and there was a recent blog post which has now been deleted saying that Paris was reaping the whirlwind of Western foreign policy. Now, Jeremy Corbyn was chair of Stop the War Coalition. He's still very closely associated to it. Should he distance himself from Stop the War? What they said was appalling. I mean, it was absolutely appalling because, you know, clearly... Nobody thinks that it was Paris that, or the France that was responsible for what happened. It was terrorists who were responsible. And, you know, a time when so many people are grieving for those they have lost and also for the attack to our way of life as well. So I think it's really important that we show solidarity with people of Paris and with the people of France. And actually, that's what that's the Labour Party was doing yesterday in Parliament. Uh, that's what people across Britain will be doing and tonight when we have the England and France game as well. Should he distance himself, though, further? I mean, he's due to speak, Jeremy Corbyn, at a Christmas fundraiser for Stop the War Coalition. Should he cancel that engagement? It's not what I would do, but, you know, Jeremy has to speak for himself. I'm not here to speak for Jeremy. No, sure, but as, a member, so. but as a member of the Labour Parliamentary Party, are you happy to see your Labour leader speak uh, for... You know, maybe you are happy for sp Stop the War Coalition when they are saying things Joe, like I that. don't think any of us should be associated with statements like that. I think they were appalling, and I think, you know, we've all been clear to say it's absolutely appalling. But 
But I think, look, there was a there was a wider issue here about the very serious threat in terms of extremism and the challenge from ISIS to Europe and also to Britain and how we respond. And we have to respond by having stronger security in response, but also that strong sense of solidarity and not allowing terrorists to divide us, not allowing terrorists to sort of to pick us apart because they want to both sow fear and division and hatred. And that is the real challenge. And, you know, I think Europe has a lot more to do to be able to respond to this threat. Right. And as you say, you want to see a united front in terms of the response to what happened in Paris and to terrorism around the world. Um, what do you make then of Jeremy Corbyn's statement that it would have been far better if Jihadi John had been arrested rather than hit by a drone strike? Well, we know in these circumstances it wasn't possible to arrest him. Right. So we know. So was in that these statement naive in your well, mind, or again, was it misguided? I just think, Joe, this is a there's a wider issue here about what it is that Europe needs to do. So, uh, you know, the, that is what we should be talking about. There's the uh, further security measures that need to be taken, the support that the government needs to put in place, and is rightly doing in terms of support for the intelligence and security agencies. And we've supported that and need to continue to do so. I think they also need to go further in terms of support for neighbourhood policing because that local Local intelligence is also immensely important. That prevention work is also immensely important. We're going to come and on to, to the, have cuts. A, the sort of scale of cuts to policing. I think would be the wrong approach. I hope they are now rethinking that. Yes. And then there's the wider European cooperation that needs to take place, and and that includes in terms of the dealing with the refugee crisis, which is being exploited by terrorists as well. Right. But it does come back to the leader of the opposition being clear and representing the views of the parliamentary party. Um, I mean, are the events in Paris likely to change your party's position, or should they, on airstrikes in Syria? I think the, the thing that we've still not seen from the government is actually any proposal on, on Syria. I mean, I've uh, backed, and I think the Labour Party is right to back, the... Uh, airstrikes at the request of the democratically elected Iraqi government sure. against ISIS in Iraq. The challenge with Syria is, of course, it's much more complicated because of President Assad, and many of the refugees are also fleeing from Assad as well. Right, but so we've you never know seen that the a we, comprehensive it, it, approach. No, but it's clear that the Prime Minister is not going to bring forward a proposal until and unless he has the support of enough MPs not only on his own side, but particularly from Labour. Should Labour now get behind some sort of proposal or not if it comes forward to bomb IS in Syria? I think it entirely depends on what the proposal is, and we've not seen such a proposal. And, you know, you have to actually look at what the consequences of any proposal would be. You have to have a comprehensive strategy to deal with the, the conflict, the wider civil war in Syria, and we've not seen that. So I think we are still waiting for the government to come forward with any proposal. Should it be a free vote? I think, look, again, it will depend on what the proposal is, but, I mean, look, I think many of us will, will make our decisions based on what we think is the right thing to do. What was the atmosphere like? We've heard, obviously, from Labour MPs at that meeting in the House of Commons, the meeting of backbench Labour MPs, some of whom felt it was uh, the worst meeting they'd ever witnessed in terms of the response to Jeremy Corbyn's views on uh, Jihadi John, um, on talking about shoot to kill, um, and on airstrikes in Syria. What, what do you say? I think, it, you know, if this is a meeting for the Parliamentary Labour Party that the press are obviously not invited to. So obviously, no, look, I'm not, going come to, out no, I'm, not going, I'm not going to talk about the details. I mean, I've told you my views and my views on the issues around uh, the use of lethal force in the face of a terrorist threat, where you have to be strong and firm in the face of terrorist challenges. But there's disagreement, And the issues that there? I have disagreed with Jeremy on. So right. I can tell you that, but I don't think it would be right for me to talk about, you know, the kinds of meetings and discussions that take place. But again, I still come back to, I think, the wider issue for us as a country. This is not simply about one meeting of a parliamentary Labour Party. This is the wider challenge for Britain and for Europe, which I don't think we are yet meeting and yet responding to, given the pressures that we face. It will lead to the Conservative charge being said again that Labour cannot be trusted to keep the country safe and that that will stick, according to 
the Prime Minister, George Osborne, as long as Jeremy Corbyn leads Labour? Well, I don't think that is the view of the Labour Party. And, you know, yesterday you heard Andrew, Andy Burnham responding to uh, Theresa May and her announcement of the additional security support for the intelligence and security agencies uh, and showing that we will stand with the government on that. And we have to, because, you know, this is about making sure you can keep people safe. But part of keeping people safe is also about, you know, dealing with, the, you know, standing up against the divisions that the terrorists seek to sow uh, and making sure that you can take action to prevent extremism and to prevent terrorism as well. You mentioned obviously the cuts to police funding mm. and also the extra spending going uh, to spies and intelligence services. George Osborne has said today he'll double the funding for the fight against cyber crime. Worried about IS perhaps launching some sort of cyber attack. Should Labour match that pledge? Oh, I think we're absolutely right to. But yes, it's uh, look, the, this is the new kind of threats that we also face in terms of the cyber attack and it is an important threat um, to Britain um, but I think the the wider thing about having making sure that you have that intelligence uh, about where imminent threats might be but that does also require greater information sharing across Europe because we know many of these threats cross borders as well. What do you make of Nigel Farage's comments last night? He was making mm. a speech on foreign policy that the UK Muslim population has conflicted loyalties. I think it was an appalling thing to say, absolutely appalling thing to say, because you know, it, it's actually it is the uh, Muslim communities were among the first to be out condemning the appalling barbarism in Paris. It's also Syrian Muslims, uh, Muslims in Beirut, who have uh, experienced the brunt of the uh, the ISIS attack and brutality, uh, many of whom are fleeing from that brutality as well. And it is Muslim parents in Britain who are seeking to make sure that their children are not being groomed and radicalised as well. So, you know, <coughs> ISIS is a perversion of Islam. And I think the problem with what Nigel Farage said is that I think this is playing into the hands of extremists by going along this track of trying to divide us and pit us against each other when we should stand firm against such extremism. Just to go back to the initial questions on shoot to kill, mm. are you clear in your mind now with what has been said by Labour? Are they happy to support the shoot to kill policy in general well, I mean, in I, the agenda terrorism? I agree with Yvette. Um, the view is, I've spent 25 years telling police how they should behave, but their operational matters are entirely up to them. We have the best armed officers in the world, uh, and they very rarely use firearms. So I'm very much in, the, uh, in that camp, namely that they should be doing their job, allow them to do their job without politicians interfering in their jobs. So, but I think what Yvette said a moment ago about terrorism is meant to divide. It seems to be doing a good job with the Labour Party at the moment. And my concern is that we need some clarity around what the Labour Party want to do around this subject. These terrorists, are, you know, they don't represent Islam, they don't represent anybody, quite frankly. And we need people to say, not in our name, we need people to say, actually, this is something we should do about them. Yvette Cooper, thank you. Now, Belgium has raised its terror alert this morning as the hunt continues for the surviving perpetrators of Friday's attack in Paris and their accomplices. The government here has been setting out its response to the terrorist atrocity. In a speech at the Mansion House in the City of London last night, the Prime Minister said Britain must summon the spirit of World War II if it is to defeat what he called the ISIL thugs.